For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank God. For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank God. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. Thank God. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own but chose instead to mother everyone else. And together, we thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. This morning, as we open our service, we'll be singing Love Divine. It's uh, one of the great hymns that uh, Charles Wesley wrote. AJ's going to lead us as we sing together. Okay. 384. Sing it to the end, though. You got to get the last verse, or you don't get to go to heaven. See that? <laughs> Our first scripture reading this morning is from uh, the Acts of the Apostles. It's in the uh, ninth chapter, beginning with verse 36. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who had heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. 
This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, as you're able, would you stand as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed this morning? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, we're going to sing. You, you can still sit. As we prepare to pray together this morning on Mother's Day, let's sing every time I feel the Spirit. Gracious God, we single out today out of all the other days of the year to honor mothers. After all, we all had one. Some are lucky enough to still have one. But sometimes, God, we don't even realize the things that we got from our mothers, the things they taught us, the resilience the work ethic, the ability to reach down and kiss a scratched knee and make it better. We take them for granted. And certainly there are plenty of times we don't agree with them. And some of the time we didn't even like them. 
But when it's all said and done, they're still mom. Without them, we couldn't be here. And so today we take time to think about the things that our mothers did for each of us. And then, of course, there are many, many out there that have mothered us in so many other ways. Neighbors that mothered us, Sunday school teachers, doctors, nurses, medical professionals, lots of people have mothered us. And so as well as our mothers today, we give thanks for the way women have changed the world. Sometimes we forget about Mary, the mother of Jesus, how important she was, how much she taught him, how much he learned from her. And of course, we think about all those mothers out there today that are having a hard time because they've lost a child or because they couldn't have one. So today, let us not forget the impact that all women who have mothered us have had on our lives. Today, let's make it about them. Because just as Mary helped Jesus to grow physically and spiritually over his life, mothers have changed us too. And we know that every mother isn't having a hard time, but many are. So as we celebrate Mother's Day today, keep our compassion high, our mercy at the front, and our willingness to love like Mary loved Jesus, like Jesus loved us in front of everything else. Remind us that that kind of love is the special kind. The kind that comes from you. Of course, we thank you for Jesus and the things He taught us and the ways that He teaches us even today. And we're grateful for the days the disciples ask Him, how do we pray? And He answered by saying, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as you're able, would you stand as we sing, Be Thou My Vision, and then we'll hear from you the gospel of church. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus walking in the temple 
was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks you, be to God. And you may be seated. Really, there's, there's two scriptures that are important to us today. I think that the, the scripture from the Acts of the Apostles is very powerful. Uh, I think we need to be reminded sometimes that Peter was not the... Uh, uh, at that time, Peter was not necessarily a hero in many ways. He had abandoned Jesus. He, he publicly talked against him out loud as they were taking Jesus to be crucified. He was not the, the model person at that time. He was the one everybody looked around and said, Jesus betrayed, I mean, Peter betrayed Jesus. And then we have this person, Lydda or Dorcas, and she uh, she's well thought of. She's that one, you know, kind of that helped people do stuff. Apparently she made tunics and, uh, I don't know, in today's world, afghans and potholders. I don't know what all she made. And all of the other people, you know how it always is when there's a crafty person around, everybody says, oh, would you do this for me? Would you sew this for me? Would you fix this for me? She was that kind of a person. And she died. And they were all gathered around saying, well, look what she made for me. And they were, you know, holding it out. She made this, and she made this. Somebody calls Peter. Well, they probably didn't call him. They sent word. Maybe they texted him. And so Peter shows up and he goes in there and these women are wailing and crying about what used to be. And he shoes them all out of the room. And then prays and raises Tabitha from the dead. And then calls them back and says, look, now, I, I think there's a really kind of behind the scenes, in between the lines message here, is you can't see the new stuff as God is doing in your life if you hang on to the old stuff. Amen. You can't see the possibilities that God can do if you hang on to what used to be. I mean, really, friends, that's what we believe when we go to funerals. I mean, we're sad and we grieve and, and it was very sad to be with Buddy's family yesterday as they, they grieved the loss of Buddy Garvin, Raymond, the great guy, the police sergeant, all the other things he was. But everybody in the room knew he wasn't in the casket. He was gone to be with God. Amen. And so they closed the casket at the beginning of the service because it's time to get past what was and celebrate what is. And we want that for everybody. Doing, doing memorials and funeral services for people of faith is not a hard job because the people want to celebrate. They want to remember the good times and they want to know that they're, they want to hear the words from the gospel that tell them he, their, their loved one is safe. So then we get to the Gospel of John today where Jesus says, well, if you're one of mine, you hear me, and if you're not, hmm. The Jews were testing Him. They, they wanted to kill Him. Why? Because He was interfering with the power. He was changing it from a top-down faith movement to a grassroots faith, faith movement. And friends, that's exactly what needs to happen again right now. 
We can't wait for somebody, whether in, in our church or the Catholic church, it's not going to be up to a bishop or a cardinal or a district superintendent to mandate to us that we start to reach people in the name of God. It's going to have to come from in here. We're going to have to be the ones that Jesus refers to when he says, my people hear my voice. I know them. They follow them. And if Jesus knows you, you get eternal life and you'll never perish. I love this. I, I, there's a particular reason I love it, but in this version it says, no one will snatch them out of my hand. I just love it that Jesus would actually use words like that. Maybe he did. I mean, maybe it's been translated. I don't know, but isn't that great? Nobody, you get snatched, right? You know what it means to get snatched? Yeah, I, I uh, when I was a, being trained to be a fireman, <laughs> one of our lieutenants, there's a thing called a pike pole. Some of you that have fire experience probably know it's a long pole with the hook and the thing on the end. And he was teaching us about uh, uh, structural fires. This wasn't crash rescue stuff. And he said, you take the pike pole and you snatch that stuff right out of the ceiling. I'll never hear that word without thinking about Lieutenant Lee telling me to snatch stuff. In other words, what the devil or nobody else can snatch you out of Jesus' hands. Amen. Now that ought to be good news. Yep. If you hear his voice. Now, I'm sure if you're married or have children, you're aware that sometimes people have selective hearing. Amen. Sometimes we hear what we want to hear. Jesus is saying, you need to hear what I say, not what you want to hear. And I want to tell you that's a little bit painful sometimes. It'll make you squirm in your chair every now and then when you think, well, I read it this way, and I think that it's, you know, I need to, I need to do this stuff for God, but, you know, I've also got to cut the grass, and i got to, uh, well, i got to, yeah. i got a lot of stuff in line, Jesus. I'll get to you eventually. And one of the things that, that I loved about talking to those guys that worked with Buddy Gartman in the police department was, it didn't matter whether they worked with him in auto theft, and he had a reputation for being able to find the, the, the VIN numbers. You know, they put them on more than just the front windshield. They're all over the car. He knew everywhere they were to look to match them up. But, but he was never one to berate or push down. He was always lifting people up. He was always teaching and showing and every one of those guys, and there were about six or seven of them there, and let me just tell you, those of you who are at the service, you probably noticed it, but you knew they were cops when they walked in the room. Every one of them. Even the guy with the beard, I knew. I didn't have to go ask him, oh, did y'all work with Buddy? I went and said, when did y'all work with Buddy? How'd you know? I said, well, <laughs> you look like cops. But what they said was he was also known not only as a superior detective and as a loyal police officer, but he was known as a person of faith. So you know, I go back for my police academy reunion every year. This coming year will be 50 years. They may know me now as a person of faith, but I'm quite sure if you took them back in a time machine, that wouldn't be what they would report about me 50 years ago. I finally figured it out. All the stuff that goes on in life is a whole lot better when you put God first. When you make a decision to be in the flock, to be a member of the flock, to be included. Because if you're included, you're also missed when you're not there. You probably noticed Ron and Maxine aren't here today. Maxine has an upper respiratory thing and she has a tendency to turn that in quickly to pneumonia so they're staying put, which is what they should do. But they called 
Ron did. So I just want you to know we're, you didn't have a wreck on the way. We're not broke down on the way. We're fine. We can't get there today. And so many of you do the same thing. I don't need you to be accountable to me, but let somebody know. Because we care. And when we get used to seeing you every week and we don't see you, we wonder and we want to know. And so you're probably going to get a phone call. If not from me, from somebody. That's what it means to be in the flock. Now, there's a question here. We raised it in Sunday school, and, and, and I think it's, a, it's kind of an interesting question because he says you don't believe because you don't hear my voice. He doesn't say you don't believe because you didn't kneel down on the knees and say the sinner's prayer. He didn't say you don't believe because you haven't joined the right church. He says you don't believe because you don't hear my voice. And I'm fully convinced that in 2022, the church needs to realize that some people need to belong in order to believe. Sometimes we become a part before we know exactly what our beliefs are or are they not. And the great thing about the United Methodist Church is we're not gonna, we're not gonna beat you up for being in any particular place in the process. I had a friend years ago, his name was Rusty Shepherd. He unfortunately took his own life. Oh, this probably been oh, 15, 16 years ago, there was a Presbyterian preacher somewhere that accepted a person into membership uh, as an agnostic. And it just made Rusty furious. And you know, to become a member of the church, we do have to ask a couple of questions. Have you been baptized? That seems that's essential. You have to be baptized. And then, you know, will you will you support the church with your prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness? We ask those questions. Well, this guy had been baptized, so he met the qualification. He just wasn't sure what he believed. And Rusty said, Well, I don't think I like that. I, I think he ought to know what he believes. And I said, Well, Rusty, I'd rather have a church full of people that aren't sure what they believe than one that knew absolutely they knew everything about it. Because I'm, I'm not always sure about what I believe ever, about everything. How about y'all? I mean, I believe the tomb's empty. I believe Jesus is risen. But the rest of this stuff is, you know, I think it depends. I think there's a whole lot of gray between the black and white. And I think it depends on the day and the place and where you are. Wesley said it this way. He said, it takes four things to understand the scriptures and your place with God. He said it takes scripture and it takes tradition and it takes reason and it takes experience. Now some people are looking for the experience every week. That's what they want at church. They want to have the mountaintop experience every week. They're likely to be disappointed. And some people are looking to make sure it works exactly right according to the Scripture. Well, that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell the story different ways. Everything doesn't line up and match up. In fact, JT put on Facebook this morning, he said there's a lot of biblical people out there that aren't very Christ-like. Amen. This is not a tool that we beat people up with. Which is exactly the reason Jesus answered the Pharisees and the Sadducees, whoever the Jews were they were questioning. He said, I have told you who I am. But you don't believe. I mean, this is the leaders. What would it have meant for them to buy into the Jesus story? Well, you know how they were. They had tax collectors out there working for them, collecting the money. And they told the collect tax collector, we need X number of dollars. Anything you get over that, you can have. The Romans were using the Jews. The Jews were taking advantage of the poor people. In some ways, it looks just exactly like the government today. I mean, really. The government's not going to fix it, people. They can't even run the post office. Amazon can you order something from Amazon and have it delivered at your house today before you get home from church and the post office can't send a letter across town. I, I look, if we're going to depend on the people in the world running the world to fix our problems, we are in deep trouble. 
What we can count on is that these words that Jesus says are true. If you don't hear anything else, what my Father has given me is greater than all else. No one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. I don't know where you get better news than that. It's what we need to remember when we're by our mom or our dad or our uncle or our brother or even our children's grave. We need to remember they haven't perished. They're gone from us for a little while. But we'll be together again. That's the real story about the human family. It's the real story about the power of God. Now we can argue all day long about how evolution happened to the Big Bang Theory and all that other stuff. To me, and, and some people would say, well, you're a flaming liberal. Though to me, it doesn't make any difference because whatever happened, God did it. If there was a Big Bang, God did it. If we evolved in seven 24-hour days, God had to do that. Those are all ways that we begin to understand and get a glimpse of God, but those are not what we need to know. What we need to know, friends, is if you can hear Jesus' voice, if you do what Jesus commands and asks you to do, you have eternity with Jesus Christ. And I just don't have better news. But it is Mother's Day. And we all got to remember some stuff about mom. I don't think I ever called my mother mother. But maybe when she got older and I was having to try to corral her <laughs> a little bit. I know this, that she, wouldn't, she was a good cook when she could stay focused. <laughs> she was a good housekeeper as long as my dad and I were around. She told my dad we didn't need to have a, car, uh, a dishwasher because she had my dad. <laughs> she was a great, outstanding second grade school teacher. But I know that in whatever way she could, loving me, her only son, was the most important thing she could do. She didn't always know how to act it out. She didn't always tell me. But I know that's true. And I know without my mom and my dad, sometimes dragging me, kicking and screaming with the heels dragging down the hall to get to church, I wouldn't have known how to go on when they're gone. So I think today's a day to reflect about moms too. And somehow or another put them in the context of of the messages we hear here, the, the one from Dorcas where, you know, we, it would be so good to, to have mom still here to make sure, uh, uh, red velvet cake because she'd make good ones. But to realize we can't go on to the things that are coming in our future if we don't let go of that. And now we have the memories and the joy and we have responsibility to do those things for somebody else. It keeps getting handed off. It never completely goes away. There's little parts of my grandma and my mom, and there's little parts of my grandma that my mom gave me. One of the things Buddy Garman told his grandkids when they get ready to go somewhere, you're a Garman. Don't forget who you are.
Well, your mom, you're your mama's kid. Don't forget who you are. Amen. And you're a child of God. Don't forget who you are. Amen. So in a few minutes, we're going to gather together and we're going to socialize and have some fun. And we're going to eat probably too much. And we're going to have, we overdo everything because that's what we do on Mother's Day. And we overdo stuff. But you know, the, the Methodist women sort of created Mother's Day. So it's we're in honor of that, we are here to, to do all that. But we're going to get back to doing stuff to celebrate family. Friends, being a part of the flock is the, is the plan. And we need to get everybody back. One day at a time. One place at a time. One deal at a time. And everybody won't be able to be here every week. But we got to work at it. We got to be connected because being connected is important. It allows us to be alive through other people to have information. You know, it's, it's kind of like the internet, except this is a spiritual connection. It's way more important. And as far as I know, on the spiritual connection, it's safer <laughs> than the internet. But we need to get together and share and visualize and talk be a part of the community. It's my hope that as we move into summertime, we'll find more ways to get together. But let me remind you today that on May the 20th at 7 p.m., Bill and Kim Nash will be here. They're going to be talking about Champions Kids Camp, but they're coming this time. It's not going to be after a worship service. It's not going to be anything. It's going to be just coming to entertain us and to have fun because they missed coming here the last couple of years. I expect it to be the best they've ever done here. It's a free concert. Really, friends, bring your friends. Don't miss it. It'll be great. Bring some people that you couldn't get to come to church. Tell them the only churchy thing is going to be that we're going to be in the building. And let me tell you, that's a bait and switch because Bill's going to move their hearts too. But not under the auspices of a preacher. Okay? Make your plans. Get your family here. we we got plenty more chairs. We can set up more places. We would, it would just, the first time they ever came, we had 225 people here. I would just love to fill this place up. We need to see it full. So let's work together to make that happen. And then as we go from this place today, remember who you are. You can hear Jesus' voice. You're promised eternity. But that for us, what can stand against us? Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, we don't pass an offering plate right now. We're still not have got back to having ushers, but there is a basket over here in the back. Uh, we're glad to accept your gifts, ties, and offerings. Also, when you go to eat, if you feel like it, put some change or buck or something in the pot. We're going to start to do that just to help us pay our apportionments a little bit. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing all of you at lunch, dinner, and if you have other plans, we certainly understand. Uh, as you're able, would you stand as we sing together? Blessed be the time that binds.
Would you please be seated? I know you thought you were going to leave. <laughs> Give us just about five or six minutes to get the stuff uncovered so we don't have a bottleneck when we go in there. You should be able to go in from the door on this side down here. That's to my right.